Come in, children, settle down. Thomas, stop hitting Abdul with your ruler, you big old racist. Anna, no, your pencil does not go in Gabriella's vagina. Settle down, settle down. It's time for class. And it's today we're going to be taught by our supply teacher, who just so happens to be an irritating wooden bird. Why, why, why? Do shut up, you silly little chirper! Play days, formerly known as Play Bus, lasted from 1988 until 1997 on the BBC's preschool television. It had to change its name as there was a charity called Play Bus, and therefore, to not confuse the matter, the BBC politely changed the name of their television show. It was the follow-up to Play School, a show you might remember if you're a little bit older like I am. A show which featured a horrible beanbag that just sat motionless as a main character. Move, you shit. There were early appearances in Play Bus by future children's TV superstars like Zoe Ball and Dave Benson Phillips. Alright, I may be exaggerating with Dave Benson Phillips being a superstar, but he was in that show with all the slime in it. Slime, very 90s thing, very good. I think he's a superstar of about 1996, if you ask me. And uh, what would happen in the show would be that the aforementioned play bus would stop at different spots each weekday, with the Welsh inquisitive avian that I previously mentioned being Monday's episode, that's the Y-Bird stop, Uh, the playground stop being on Tuesday, the dot stop being Wednesday, dot was just like a doll that didn't do anything, much like that bean bag from uh, play school of course, Um, and that was sort of the format of the show, which was uh, a very popular educational programme indeed. It was indeed the educational programme of choice for early millennial toddlers, before it went all bloody weird and trippy with stuff like Teletubbies and In the Night Garden. Have you ever seen them? They make absolutely no sense at all. No wonder teens and people in their early 20s are so bloody odd. Friendly Learning, well, they were the edutainment arm of alternative software. They were a bit of a experiment by the 8 and 16-bit computer licensing juggernaut to glean some more cash out of their acquired famous properties. On the spectrum, we had games based on Thomas the Tank Engine, Sooty and Sweep, and then this, Play Days. But unlike the other franchises mentioned, Play Days didn't even try and have a fun non-educational game on the main alternative label. You will sit there and you will learn Play Days watching person and you will enjoy every moment of it. Learn. There are 13 games for your would-be child or early 40s regressed fool to experience and the Y-Bird is a omnipresent feature throughout all, helping and judging you during the baker's dozen of brain-building activities. She doesn't shit on your confidence at any point and at one point she starts getting all horny about you, which is okay for an adult, but don't say that children are hot. From shape recognition to dot to dots to basic mass, Play Days offers quite a wide range of things to do for your potentially still pooing their pants ankle biters. There are four levels of difficulty and I know my place because I chose level two. I'm not that dumb. To prove I'm not that dumb, I had Wobble, the celebratory legless clown, waddle onto the screen multiple times to tell me how smart I am. Look! That shamble on his hip bones must have really hurt, so I'm chuffed that he thinks I'm this incredibly clever. That poor fella is disabled. What a nice guy. The controls have you either moving the cursor keys to select the letters or a Kempston interfaced joystick, which is nice and simple for your target three to eight year olds. Note that the term rub out means delete as opposed to having a wank. There are no clips of the Wirebird in a bra or any little snuck in bits from Sam Fox's strip poker. If you wish to punish your unit, remember you're doing it at a game aimed at three to eight year olds, you sick flipper. And I don't care how excited you get about spelling the word jumper correctly. 
As with all these education games based on TV shows, it's very hard for me to get particularly enthused by these titles. But where does this rank with the other games such as Mr. Men, Paddington, Shoe People and Sooty? Well, it is better than most in terms of its presentation, but then it did come out just as the Spectrum was about to pop its clogs in a commercial sense in 1993, compared to some of the others which came out in the early to mid-1980s. There's not a lot more to say about an educational game like this, really. You do get a decent representation of the musical theme, I suppose. Yet another earworm, so it is. Every time I do an episode based on TV shows, I usually have the theme stuck in my head, and this is no different. In fact, I think it's one of the worst ones for it. Your Sinclair were the only magazine to review the Spectrum version of Playdays, and that's because they had a demo of it on the front of their magazine. The review, which was in their issue 89, which came out in May 1993, said basically they preferred shoe people. They said that you shouldn't buy this if you're only going to buy one educational title. They say it is decent, but no award winner, and they gave it a 65%. Well, that's a short class today, isn't it? There's the school bell. That's enough learning. Class dismissed. Don't talk to that man who lives in a boat with a funny eye and a thick forearms, even if he says he's got three excellent games for you to play. He's certainly lying about some of them anyway. Yes, next time we'll be covering the three games of Popeye. Popeye, more like K-thanks-bye. <laughs>